guys. So um, my name is Fabek Bednarczyk. I'm a senior engineer in SoftMind, um, together with Jakub. Yes, hello, my name is Jakub, and I'm also a system engineer in SoftMind. On today's agenda, we'll talk about what observability is. Then we go briefly in 5G network architecture. And then we'll try to combine 5G network and observability based on our lab experience. Um, then we go through a small review of observability tools. And then we will try to convert, uh, show, show you, yeah, show you some demo regarding metric logs and tracing uh, as observability itself uh, based on our lab and yeah. the observability stack that we use. Um, at the end, we'll, if we get some enough time, we'll get some conclu uh, conclusions and the question and answer section. Okay, so introduction to observability. Um, in general, when we have uh, monetic applications, uh, we use alerts, right, to trigger actions when, whenever we need our involvement from the uh, operating perspe perspective. So let's imagine that we have a monetic application um, and we introduce some alerts. It means that we introduce some um, states, uh, lo log logic into the states that, you know, the application uh, is up, it's down, uh, it performs on the, some uh, threshold above uh, or below, and we are triggered logically, yes, no, we are informed that uh, something goes wrong, your administrator has to uh, check what's inside, so if you have application, um, we log into the some virtual machine, check the logs, and, you know, probably, you know, uh, the mostly that uh, how it works and, you know, we are using um, SNMP channel uh, and, it, and the text message in the email as a channel to inform operation, operator, uh, operators that something went wrong. And this is a common approach uh, from end days. Another level of our uh, monitoring is application performance monitoring. So we arm our application with some metrics and those metrics can be collected by uh, some external tools and those external uh, tools can present those metrics in some dashboards so we can use those dashboards in scope of um, extend our visibility of the, and, and, and understanding of the system so we can track some um, performance metrics uh, error detection even you know some uh, suspicious behavior from the uh, users um, to track if something goes wrong. So we do not uh, inform that something went wrong or something is, uh, we are, let's say, informed that, you know, that we should uh, go through um, so an operating actions to be taken, but we are just uh, can see vis in easy way how the traffic things looks like, what's the uh, user behaviors and so on checking just metric and dashboards. Yeah, and what's cool, uh, we can model with data the user experience, so we can also present it later in some exactly. graphs or something. And APM and monitoring uh, simple alerts uh, are cool when you have a monitoring application, we don't have any scattered environment, right? And uh, there's a game changer with microservices. So um, the microservice concepts brings additional, let's say, uh, flexibility, but also big additional complex of monitoring such applications. So uh, just imagine that you need to build your application from, from with small bricks that is called a microservice. So it's a, a small collection and uh, very limited from business perspective logic of application that you can um, combine with mesh of such microservices that are connected through some API in general, it could be REST API, and the uh, mesh of communication and interaction between those microservices has to be tracked somehow, yeah. and this is brings a uh, additional complex of monitoring for uh, scattered uh, infrastructure and scattered environment like uh, with microservices. And this is why we would like to um, present you observability. So um, there are three pillars of um, of observability. So first of all, it's known me metrics from APM, right? So um, aggregatable data measured over time that you can simply um, collect, analyze, visualize on the dashboards and so on, right? Um, logging, so it's an uh, event that occurs on the application so we can understand what happens in application. So we can check logs with the timestamp 
and validate if uh, what what was the state of application during some period of time, right? And uh, something new and something that uh, makes observability fulfilled is tracing. So um, due to the fact that we have um, system with built with microservices, um, simply forces us to track that the application as a whole um, has to be monitored from the end user perspective. Uh, and due to the fact that microservices are, are built as a block of microservice, uh, application is built as a uh, block of uh, of uh, microservices uh, that uh, all interaction between microservices uh, just simply goes as a chain of interactions, mm -hmm. brings that uh, uh, whole delay or whole response time uh, is a sum of all latencies from each microservice separately. Yeah. And while, while we are talking about microservices, uh, microservices in scope of 5G network, so service-based architecture um, philosophy brings us into microservice worlds. I mean that in, um, when 5G network was introduced, the idea was that uh, SBA is in, uh, provides some modular framework um, that uh, just provide us very small business, business application, business functions to uh, build our 5G network. So mm, it is a simplified microservice world, right? So we can build small, um, we can build small applications that are, that are called functions. Those functions uh, are uh, connected to each other by a service mesh, by, uh, by interactions. And for 5G in the core plane network, um, REST API was defined for, for such communication channel. And it's easy to detect if you have just one instance, right? But just imagine that you have few, uh, not in a few, but you have hundreds of uh, containers running on your, in your setup. Each container prepares a lot of data as a logs. Each container has a chain in scope of uh, talking to different containers in the same time to different microservices. And this uh, produces a lot of uh, valuable data, but data that makes it complex how to collect those data, how to visualize those data, and how to prepare your data to be uh, somehow and handful for you as operator. I mean that uh, in case if you uh, lose uh, visibility of those logs, you may simply lose some information that, uh, let's say, um, can bring you into the trouble that you uh, miss some bottlenecks or some uh, security concerns or service uh, breakups. Mm -hmm. And this is where okay. observability uh, kicks in and uh, hopefully that we will be able to uh, show you uh, in live demo how more or less it works. Yeah, but now let's quickly move on to our lab setup where we deployed a whole observability stack. And uh, firstly, we need to say that if you think about observability, there are plenty of tools that can do almost the same job. Um, OK, so now, firstly, we've uh, deployed our uh, setup on the Proxmox cluster. Is that to, to focus in there should be free, <laughs> free nodes, <laughs> yeah. Free nodes, uh, yeah. A uh, free node cluster of Proxmox where we deployed our machines. Everything is managed in philosophy AIC, so infrastructure as a code. We've deployed every machine with Terraform uh, combined with Packer, and ev also everything is con configured uh, via Ansible. Uh, so we've deployed a whole stack on Kubernetes and in Kubernetes namespaces. And what's cool about this setup is that we have separate namespaces for observability or monitoring or logging. Uh, and we can duplicate these namespaces and sets of pods to another clusters just to uh, connect it to, uh, to our observ observability stack. Yes. So now, quickly, uh, let's move to observability stack. Yeah. Uh, One match my side, as Kuba said, that you know, when we ask you each of you what tools you know from observability, you can have some different tools, and you are all right because the, uh, on the market you have uh, many tools available. Whatever in software mind we, s let's say we focus on open source projects, so. Uh, 
Today, we, uh, so we'll, we're going to present you just uh, some uh, family of uh, observability tools yeah, that so are, let's say, around Grafana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we stick to Grafana stack mostly because it's well integrated uh, to itself. So firstly, we start with Grafana, which is tool to visualize our gathered data. And what's, it, what's important to note is that Grafana does not act as a data source. We need something to uh, which uh, some uh, component which would gather the uh, data. Uh, Grafana only visualizes it. So we use Prometheus uh, as a data source. Prometheus gathers the metrics uh, from all the applications in our Kubernetes uh, cluster uh, via uh, HTTP yeah, endpoints. So well, would you mind to explain how more or less Prometheus and application works? Yeah, so all our applications uh, ship the HTTP endpoint where Prometheus uh, requests for metrics and then remote writes it to, to Thanos. So uh, in short, application has to be armed in uh, Prometheus metrics, right? So to, to deliver those, those metrics yeah. towards uh, and be ready to prepare those metrics for uh, yeah. pro and Prometheus. And what's and interesting why we here? Are using Thanos here. Yes, Thanos, because uh, well, Prometheus is very good data source and it gathers the metrics very well, uh, but it is not well optimized for long term uh, data. So we need some solution to if we want to analyze from longer period of uh, time. Uh, the data, so we need something that would store it uh, properly. So Thanos is a solution for long-term data storage. Uh, and what's cool about Thanos, it uses the same query language as Prometheus. Uh, well, it's because uh, Thanos is somehow a fork uh, project of uh, Prometheus. So we can query the Prometheus as well as Thanos with the same queries. Okay, so we have metrics. Now let's add logs to it, to our system. Uh, and we use for it Grafana Loki. It's a log aggregation system. Um, Loki acts as a log aggregation system and it gathers logs from all the pods. Uh, the pod, how it works is that uh, our application prints the logs to standard output and Kubernetes uh, gathers those logs and sends it to, uh, to Loki. Yeah, by agent. With, yeah, by agent. Yeah, it can be FluentD or Promptel or anything. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's a centralized place where we can simply um, verify all logs from all applications from containers. Mm -hmm. So uh, just imagine that instead of uh, you know, logging to logs to Kubernetes uh, each container separately, yeah. you may uh, search uh, logs in the one centralized place mm -hmm. and check if something goes uh, Exactly as you could see, as you could see in a, let's say, log your uh, mm -hmm. from uh, let's say logs uh, cont uh, container logs, right? Yeah. So logs, metrics, what logs uh, are traces. Uh, so to trace, uh, we use uh, Grafana Tempo. Um, Grafana Tempo is a dis distributed tracing system, and how it works, it uh, it depends on open telemetry protocol. So uh, our applications should be armed with um, open telemetry protocol support and it gathers all the requests and sends to open telemetry collector and open telemetry collector then sends those uh, collected traces uh, in the form of chunks of spans and correlated traces uh, to some exporters and we use as ex exporter Grafana Tempo uh, which allows us to present beautifully uh, yeah. traces. As you can see, even the, um, the whole time of um, execution of the single uh, s uh, request uh, on the single request is a sum of latencies of each microservice here. So you can even uh, track which microservice uh, took the most of the time of the request uh, handling. Okay, So this yeah. is one of the crucial things that we, uh, what brings observability so important in case of uh, the distributed tracing system. Yeah. So uh, next, uh, we, as we have metrics, tracing, and logging, now we can uh, catch the context of whole problem or situation in our deployments. Uh, so we have all the three uh, pillars of observability. Yeah. yeah. And well, 
Uh, what's next? What's We've important is because probably I missed due to stress uh, context. Uh, having logs, having metrics, and having uh, distributed tracing, you can catch the context what happened in the network in the par uh, particular time. So we can detect uh, some issues. We can uh, troubleshoot bottlenecks or at least understand what uh, our application, our system mm -hmm. uh, in the distributed or microservice world. Yeah, and uh, one important thing uh, which is also deployed in our cluster is service mesh uh, done by uh, Istio. Uh, well, why we need service mesh in uh, here in 5G? It's because we've faced uh, some problems with uh, support of uh, yeah. open general, during during uh, implementing of observability tools, we figure out that uh, our project do not support open telemetry protocol it's by itself. So as a workaround of this, we applied uh, Istio as a service mesh. So service mesh is an extra layer, I would say. So your application, between your application and the outside, uh, outside world, we put additional uh, network layer, I would say, that is Istio. And uh, we can control what gets in and gets out from the application for the, as a first. A single part is that also this extra proxy layer gives us additional tools that we can monitor and track what happens in the network. So it means that if uh, Isti is aware about all requests that comes in, goes out from the uh, containers, uh, we may track it. And uh, Istio has also ability that uh, can arm our application with open telemetry metrics and send it to, uh, towards uh, our uh, applications so we could at least track some span uh, correlations between uh, variation of each microservice. Yeah, so not only security enhancement, but also useful observability tool. <laughs> okay, uh, so as we've set sail to broad observability world, we wanted to experience it the most. And we also deployed Jaeger in our setup uh, to test it uh, and compare with Grafana Tempo. Yeah. So, okay, uh, I guess it, this I is the guess whole stack. We can go to to short demo, uh, firstly we would like to show you Kiali, uh, which beautifully visualizes us our service mesh and Good applications sure, deployed. Okay, guys. So um, Kiali is a web interface for uh, Istio. Probably some of you already know it. Uh, what is cool that uh, you know, based on the flaws between mi microservices. You can track, uh, even understand the architecture of your uh, of your system. Uh, probably you don't, uh, let's say, remember, but perhaps you do, you do know uh, the architecture already uh, displayed before in the few slides. So as you can see, each service here is connected is connected to SCP node, uh, SCP uh, function, and this SCP function simply. Uh, uh, works as a um, extra uh, connection connect, connection proxy towards other microservices in the world. So, next topic is that you know uh, if you uh, click on this uh, service, you may see some additional uh, information from the traffic perspective. Also, if you click on application, uh, you may s you also see some, uh, let's say, uh, connections from uh, from each application to each uh, to, to di different uh, microservice. You can also track some uh, extra metrics and so on. So this is, uh, let's say, additional tool that gives you some um, overview on the uh, on the system. Yeah, and this one also uses Jaeger. So yeah, um, and those traces he produced by. Open telemetry are sent to our Grafana tempo. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, guys. So uh, f I think we can yeah. continue. So uh, we'd like to present you some scenario regarding um, uh, your illustration. So we have a, a simulator running uh, uh, that. Uh, that's trying to register to our uh, control plane. Uh, so we'll see interaction between AMF. AMF uh, getting requests from the UA will ask uh, AUSF 
uh, for our authentication. Authentication process will lo would look like that. We have to be, uh, we have in chain unified uh, data management function. Unified data <laughs> management function will ask unified data resource uh, function uh, where data, structured data are in place. Uh, to get the data, then uh, ASF would respond to AMF and uh, AMF will respond to UA. So uh, having a trace, hopefully that we will sh uh, show you this, um, this flow. This is, uh, I would say, network uh, a flow more or less that is simplified without SCP in the, in the path. Uh, so we'll see aut uh, authentication. AUSF will ask for generate out data. You then will, uh, will co cooperate with UDR and uh, generate response. Then we uh, ASF should respond. Uh, if something, if everything goes right, five GAK confirmation uh, endpoints will be reached to uh, exchange uh, all mm, keys uh, for to close all uh, let's say security connection. And after this procedure, uh, authentication should be. Uh, successful and uh, we can proceed with uh, other registration steps. So give me a so guys, we have already collected some um, trace for you guys for, for that. So if we see a connection here, we can see uh, that the uh, AMF function is asking for AUSF function. Probably I need to. Can you see it well? So uh, it's asking on the UA authentication endpoint. The response was 201 status code. Um, then we can see that AMF was triggered here as well. So yeah, and what was asking from uh, to UDM. Two hundred response was run. Security information generate out data, uh, and we should see also that UDM will ask UDR to continue. Uh, one thing that you may see is that uh, we have only span context uh, available. We don't have a um, correlation context. This is a crucial and this is a one of, uh, let's say, dark side that we have only uh, Istio um, service mesh and uh, uh, open telemetry support is, is supported is from uh, on only from, from there. So uh, if our application is written uh, from the beginning, developers should uh, simply um, develop also, let's say, include um, open telemetry uh, so we could uh, make a correlation context from the beginning, right? Okay, but could you tell us what is a correlation context? Correlation context is uh, some metadata that uh, makes uh, our, um, uh, let's say, our distributed trace glued together. So instead, instead it's a sum of spans that we can yeah. trace together in the single uh, in the single trace, uh, without uh, correlation context, right? We need to uh, we need to let's say be more aware that uh, this trace depends on this one, and this one depends on this one, and so on, right? So uh, it makes a, a our life a little bit more complicated, but you know uh, uh, we can see those chains of uh, microservices and latency as a as a summary in the response. Okay, Kuba, mm -hmm. would you mind making yeah. another step? Uh, one thing that I'd like to also uh, okay, like so to also cover here is a scenario uh, when we have a dashboard. Okay, Dash this dashboard is armed with some alerts. We are sim simply catching here 404 calls codes from the HTTP uh, of uh, our microservices, and uh, in case if 404 uh, calls code Appears we are trigger alerts. Uh, mainly one of the possible scenarios that UDR do not have any user uh, in the database, and we try to register to our 5G network some uh, agent that should not be registered at all. Okay, so let's proceed. 
So no. right now we are tracking no errors, no f no no 404 errors at all. Green heart means allergic is okay. Allergy is not triggered. So in a moment we should see that 404 occurs just because our user is not registered in uh, our database. Yeah, and the flow is a little bit. As as you can see right now, the amount of error is getting up. So you have one occurrence of the such. Yeah, the alarm is so triggered. Yeah. So but SCP right now is... Yeah, but now the alarm is in the pending state. Yeah. Okay, now it's already, red. Already triggered. Yeah. So it means that you know, it was in pending state, then it is triggered. It means that uh, something went, went wrong. So you should get uh, an alert uh, through, uh, defined by um, the Grafana uh, channel. So it could be, you know, uh, even email Slack or email or Slack yeah. channel, yeah. And so we know that we need to uh, get to work try to uh, figure out what happened. So we can use uh, here uh, export. Uh, we, are, uh, we are using OLTP here, last five minutes. So let's try to check. I'm looking for 404 in the traces. Yeah, and also what needs to be uh, said is that we've prepared before uh, these size and these queries, but these queries are really easy to uh, yeah. to build. To be honest, we don't want to make additional uh, latency of searching for that. That's why we have those. But as we can see, UDM was asking for to UDR uh, for some data. Let's see what happened. And it did status code is 404. We can check that there is a uh, AMSI with such one authentication data and the authentication subscription was unsuccessful, not found. So we can go to Grafana Loki now. If you know that our application is UDR, let's select UDR. Time. We need to change the time also. The last five minutes. Uh, first, you change the time. <laughs> To last five minutes. Okay. So we have uh, UGR, right? Okay. Uh, run this query. One, yeah. And uh, this one is just to colorize uh, out of all the logs. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, we we got some more logs. So let's yeah, focus the on the density this area. increased. And we are checking logs here. And here we go, warning. Cannot find a subscriber um, permanent identifying database. So this is one of uh, possibility how to, um, let's say, combine your metrics, your uh, di distributed tracing, mm -hmm. and the logs from Loki system to figure out what happened and uh, troubleshoot your um, microservice world. Yeah, so we could really enhance and speed up the process of finding the solution for our problem. Well, because now we know that it's UDR that caused the problem, not any other network function, yes? Well, this is a simple example, right? Um, just, to, uh, just to try to ha somehow convince you that uh, with uh, such, let's say, set of tools, you may, uh, you may simply know better about your uh, applications in the uh, 5G core. Last but not least, references. So uh, if you get interested about those, uh, those are an articles that we were using uh, to build our uh, you know, presentation and uh, to be prepared for our meetings today. All right, thank you for now.